Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. Requested program about falcons. The oh, the fastest birds in the sky, uh, master uh, predators specializing in keep catching uh, birds mainly. Uh, just an, an absolute fascinating group of birds, so glad to address that group. And I'm going to talk about uh, the, the primary ones that we see here through the heart of the country uh, and then I'll throw in at the end, I'll throw in a couple of the rarest that, that, that uh, we rarely see down here or up here, depending upon which one I'm talking about. But the falcons are, you know, for the most part, uh, characterized by you know, very uh, sharp wings and decent, decently long tails. Uh, the tail on a bird is a rudder. And so when you're chasing other birds, it sure helps to have a little bit longer tail so you can turn quickly to catch them. So falcons tend to catch their prey on the wing. There, you know, there are some falcons that, eat, that and will eat small mammals and, and drop to the ground. This being number one. This is the smallest falcon in North America. And it, if you have a really old field guide, it may call this bird a sparrow hawk if you, in, instead of uh, American kestrel, which is the, the name of this bird now. Uh, one of the reasons they, it may, why the scientists change names of birds? Well, they have to, uh, to bring them in line with birds around the world. The, the, in this case, the American kestrel uh, came in line with the bird that is it is most similar to in in Europe in the old world the Eurasian kestrel, um, and it it lined up those those names and so that's the reason in the scientific community they changed names for different reasons but when it came to this group of birds they did change names to get them in line with birds around the world uh, and they've done that several years ago now so unless you have a really old field guide it should call this bird an American kestrel now one of the, it, one of the things that's fascinating about this bird of course is is hovering and that's what he's doing here in this great picture you'll see them uh, in highway medians uh, uh, hovering above the the center uh, like a cut grass area low grass area and then drop down and grab a mouse and come back up again one of the coolest things I ever learned about this bird was that they've proven that these birds can actually see mouse urine they actually can see that end of the the, the ultraviolet spectrum and so it helps them to find uh, mouse uh, urine trails in the grass so they can concentrate their hunting on that and swoop down. But they also do take small birds. Uh, this bird being the size that it is, uh, it, it, it can't take a very large bird. I mean, a blue jay has nothing to fear from a kestrel, but a goldfinch does because they, uh, they're, that's their size of bird and they can catch that. They formerly nested a lot um, in our area, it, it not quite so much anymore because they're cavity nesters and they get run off out of their cavities by other birds that want those tree cavities. But they, uh, they nest really from the Kansas City region north. There's much more common nesters up north of here. But they still do nest in our area uh, to some extent. i uh, got some other pictures of them. This is a, the other common way you see them um, is sitting on post fence posts, power poles, things like that. And here we may, I, I see them mainly in fall and, and spring migration, um, but they, you, they can be seen year round just depending upon the year and that number. Uh, beautiful birds, they, uh, the, they have blue wings and rufous backs. The females are all rufous backs, so they are sexually dimorphic. You can actually tell them apart by um, the coloration on them. Uh, let's see, got another picture or two of them here. This one's sitting up on a, street lamp and a beautiful male there. Gorgeous birds, uh, fun to watch. They Notice those eyebrows. That's going to be a common thread in this falcon world. They have these sideburns, uh, as I said eyebrows, and sideburns like Elvis. Uh, a lot of them have that distinguishing field mark of them and a lot of and mostly banded tails. So in size we're going to move up to the next size falcon that we see here and that's going to be the Merlin. It's a beautiful shot of a Merlin here. This bird is larger than the kestrel, but smaller than the prairie falcon or the or the peregrine falcon, the, the larger ones. Uh, and notice that's a really striped tail, bold tail, boldly striped tails. And we, the relationship, the classic relationship with prairie, I mean with Merlins, has been between them and shorebirds. Now they used to call them pigeon hawks years ago. That may in the field field guide you may see the name pigeon hawk in there. But in our in our part of the world, they they hunt 
and follow shorebird migrations a lot. And they, they'll, so in, up at Los Bluffs National Wildlife Refuge, whenever there's a lot of shorebirds in the area, that's a good place to find merlins here in this area. Uh, so when the shorebirds are migrating, the merlins are good to find there. Now notice, again, this picture, there are three main races of merlins that, that can occur here. Ours, of course, is primarily the prairie race, and that is what this one is. And then we also have uh, darker races that occur here. And, oh, I wanted to show you this. Look at this fantastic flight photo. He is, uh, shows you that, all that striping and barring in him. It's a beautiful shot of a, of a Merlin in flight. And then this is a darker, or Taiga uh, falcon, more northern in its range. And then we have the western one I think I got a picture of here too. Oop, this is the very dark one. This this picture was actually taken out in California by a friend of mine, um, and that just shows you how much darker that Merlin, the Western Merlins, are than the ones here. The the Prairie race is, is the lightest of the the group, and this one, the, the Western race, is the the darkest of them. So it depends on where you live. When you see a Merlin. Depends on what you're going to uh, get. Here's another of the prairie race birds. And this literally was taken in a small tree outside of a shopping mall here in Kansas City. So they can turn up anywhere. You know, they, um, they're not that common to hunt backyards. Uh, they, they are more creatures of open areas. So uh, like, like, like the wildlife refuges, uh, Squaw Creek, the wetlands, the prairies, things like that. They're much more common in those areas than they are in, um, in, in urban areas, hunting backyards or anything like that. So, well, the next one up, and I realize I don't have a picture of it, is the prairie falcon. And the reason for that is prairie falcons are very hard to get pictures of. <laughs> they don't sit still very long. Um, uh, they're usually flying very fast and zip, uh, zipping in, uh, in open areas, just like their name suggests. We see them mainly here in, in the winter months. And they look a lot like that Merlin, except they're larger. And they have dark underwings uh, up under their armpits. It's very dark when they fly. So apologize for not having a prairie falcon picture. They're, very, they're pretty uncommon here in the Kansas City area, but again, if we're going to see them, typically we're going to see them in oh, winter and then maybe early spring and that time of the year. But uh, they're amazing birds to watch and incredible flyers, very, very fast. But the bird that we, it's probably most famous in the falcon world, of course, is the peregrine falcon, and known for to be the fastest bird on the planet. They can reach speeds of 210 miles per hour in a dive um, and some of the you know they're just incredible and you imagine them colliding with a, a bird at that speed with those sharp talons what kind of damage they can do there they can kill uh, their prey very quickly um, one of the a couple of the things that are very cool about their 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 dives at that speed at that speed the air into their nostrils would actually make their lungs explode so they have specialized tissue that flaps. It actually close off their nostrils in the dive so that air doesn't come rushing in. It goes around so their lungs don't explode. So that's a, an adaptation for being able to fly that fast. And another thing is whenever they're, they're coming down in flight, whenever they're zero in on another bird that's flying away from them, instead of a straight flight, they typically barrel roll, as they, as they call it that, pilots, you can correct me, but they tend, it helps them to keep their uh, prey centered as they're, as they're flying down in the dive. They can keep realigning that prey as they can. So if they were flying in a straight line down and that bird is flying, it's much harder than if they keep realigning it as they're diving. So amazing adaptations for these, these aerial master aerialists. Here's a, a picture of one in flight that's just amazing too. Look at that, uh, that shot. Um, a friend of mine calls this this is, I wish I'd have taken that picture photo. Yeah, you, you see that, but you go, God, I wish I'd have taken that. But this is an adult peregrine falcon and it's it, beautiful plumage. Um, the classic uh, Elvis sideburns on him in flight. Powerful, look how powerful that chest is. How big that chest is. I mean, they have to have incredibly fast uh, muscles just to pull those wings down as fast as they do. And look how pointed the wing is, a classic falcon wing shape. No doubt um, uh, he's in the falcon family. So I promise I will throw in a couple of other of the rarer birds, and it depends on what part of the country you live in. If you live down in the, in the Rio Grande Valley or you live in New Mexico, you may get to see this bird. This is an Aplomado falcon. 
This is a uh, this is a Mexican bird uh, uh, that uh, was totally extirpated in uh, North America uh, uh, years ago, and they've been reintroducing them. Plus, they've had some success with nesting in in Mexico, so they've been moving up. So in New Mexico, they've got a wider range than, than we've seen in many years, and the population is successful successful nesting down there. So. The Aplomato falcon is a beautiful bird, but we don't get to see him this far north. And then the most powerful falcon of them all, that they, they, they're documented ever so rarely in Missouri, um, is the gyre falcon. And this is the, 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 the biggest, most dominant uh, falcons there are. They nest up at the top of the world. Back in the days of uh, falconry with kings, the king kings were the only ones allowed to hunt with gyre falcons. You were if you were a lord or a lowly person falconry, you didn't get to hunt with this bird. These were reserved for uh, the highest ranks in there. So uh, an incredibly powerful bird. Uh, I've never seen one. I, I really really want to someday. Uh, my best bet is maybe in Minnesota during the winter months uh, up in the Duluth area. I think they show up every winter up that way. So. I've been up there a couple of times, never found one. Uh, if you've seen one, it's amazing uh, and, and I appreciate it fully. And then the last of the bunch, that, and you talk about the outlier here, this bird is, has been reclassified a few years back as a falcon. This is the most unfalcon-like bird um, you can ever imagine. This is a crested cara cara. And this is one of those birds that in, in, when it comes to uh, grouping birds into their proper families that they didn't know what to do with for a long time. This is a unique bird. It's a national bird of Mexico. This picture was taken in South Texas at a state park down there where I trips years ago. Um, and they don't have pointed wings and they don't fly at very fast speeds. They're more scavengers than anything. But yes, this bird belongs in the falcon family. So there is the true outlier in biological terms. Um, but they're the, the falcons are just amazing birds, uh, fully, fully appreciated uh, for their beauty and their aerial uh, uh, techniques. It, learn more about them. You know, it, it, feel free. To, I mean, they are just fascinating, and you'll learn a lot of really important things. You know, the, the peregrine falcons uh, that are nesting in downtown areas now, like on the uh, on some of the skyscrapers in in bigger urban cities. We have them nesting in in Kansas City downtown. We have one nesting on a smokestack on a power plant just north of Kansas City. So they're amazing birds uh, for that. So a lot of lot of interesting facts about falcons. Um, they eat uh, mainly other birds. So. Fascinating group. Thanks to the idea for a program. Please send in more ideas for programs. We want to talk about what you want us to talk about, obviously. So give us a like, give us a share. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe. And until then, come on, let's talk birds.